measure out three and a half inches. We're going to mark one and a half inches and three and a half inches. And so again, at one and a half and three and a half. Same for the other side. About halfway between the two small holes. And follow through on the other side. We are now going to make another quarter inch hole right around here. We're going to mark a spot at two and a half inches. And drill. An access hole slightly above. An electrical connection and towards the bottom of the bin a drainage hole. I'm going to screw one electric fence post into each of the tiny holes. Tie the electric fence wire around the four posts. Snip the excesses and shift the knot. For the lid, they're going to need a section of three quarters inch plastic tubing. Either 23 or 22 gauge medical needles or blunt industrial needles, male lure lock barbs, 1 8 inch or 3.2 millimeter, and quarter inch irrigation tubing that snugly fits these lure locks. Use these barb connectors to create a manifold with a three-quarter inch tubing. Add the irrigation tubing. Plug the end of the tube. You might need a ring clamp. Secure the end of the tubing to your fountain pump. This one's rated at 500 gallons per hour. As far as a reservoir goes, I just used a Home Depot bucket with a hole cut in the top. These are the electronics that power the device. It consists of a neon sign power supply connected in such a manner to a series of capacitors and diodes which help to step up the voltage. This one is wired such that we are amplifying negative voltage. This white wire here is approximately negative 10,000 volts at around 5 milliamps. And this one is approximately negative 1,000 volts. I've mounted mine upside down in this electronic box and secured the connection with electrical tape. However, if you do have one of these, which allows you to uh, just screw the wires directly in and connect with an adapter to your power block, then that's a much better solution. But 
standard electrical tape works as well. Thread the irrigation tube through the middle hole and secure it to the lure lock barb. Pull it back against the side of the wall. Thread your needle into the lure lock. Pull off the protective cover and save this for later for when you need to throw the needle away. Otherwise it will be quite dangerous. Connect your 1000 volt wire through the top hole and then with extreme caution wrap it around the medical needle. Use a zip tie to secure this tube to a nearby structure. Give more or less slack to change the direction that the needle is pointing. Connect the 10,000 volt wire to the electric fence. Again, exercise caution of the medical needle. You're going to wire your power in and connect to a splitter. This one goes to the electrical components. This goes to the pump. And all of that is connected to a timer. A cycle timer lets you input a set period of time to be on and a set period of time to be off. So this one is set for a five second burst on and seven minutes off. This might be a little bit too much, might be a little bit too little. I'm not certain yet. That on and off time is going to vary by plant and a good starting point that I've read is five seconds on, five minutes off. Alright, finally you're going to want to add some grow lights and a system to monitor and control temperature and humidity. For most plants you want the temperature right around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity at 50% or lower. It's been raining here for the past several days so I'm not going to worry too much about the humidity here. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. Check out the other videos on the channel if you're interested.